everyone, Karis here, and today I am so excited to be flipping through the Harry Potter Magical Meditations deck. This is a deck containing 64 cards, and there is an accompanying booklet. This is published by Insight Editions, and it retails for $19.99 US. The back of the box says, embrace the knowledge of the wizarding world with this inspirational card deck, featuring different meditative prompts to help you connect to the powerful themes and positive lessons of the Harry Potter films. And there are the different categories on the back. So there's seven different categories. And I plan on using these as journaling prompts. Um, and I did flip through the cards briefly and it does look like the cards are very, some of the cards are very heavy and they do ask some pretty deep questions. So maybe if you're into Harry Potter, something that you can use to accompany any shadow work that you might be doing. So let's open this up. It is in a sturdy box, but my favorite part is this beautiful pouch that it comes in. It's on both sides, this printed Hogwarts castle here, and then the book as well. So we'll set the book aside and look at the cards and the pouch. So it is a drawstring bag, and let's just look at the different categories. So we have Flights of Fancy, Resistance, Experiencing Loss, Personal Growth, Battling Our Fears, Values and Beliefs, Relationships, and Identity. So you can tell there are some very deep topics that will be covered in this deck. So I'm not going to read through every one, but what I am going to do is I'm going to go through and just pull one of the cards from each of the prompts and read that. And then for the final one, we will go through and read what the guidebook has to say and take a look at that. So for the first one, we have Flights of Fancy. The Room of Requirement is a special room in Hogwarts that only appears when a person has great need of it. It has a different appearance depending on the situation, changing to meet the searcher's particular needs. Harry and his friends use it in Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix to hold clandestine Dumbledore's army meetings. It also appears frequently as a place to hide things, and Harry eventually finds Ravenclaw's diadem, one of Voldemort's horcruxes there. Imagine if you could step into the room of requirement right at this moment. What would it become for you? Next, we have resistance. I mean, it's sort of exciting, isn't it? Breaking the rules? Hermione Granger, Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix. Occasional harmless rule breaking can be good for you. Take a leaf out of Hermione's book today and go break a minor rule. Oh, that's fun. I like that it also, in addition to journaling prompts, has things for you to do that are sort of aligned with self-care. Next up, we have experiencing loss. Hedwig is Harry's beloved pet snowy owl, given to him by Hagrid on his 11th birthday. Hedwig is Harry's constant companion through the first six films in the series, providing help, comfort, and friendship through some of Harry's darkest times. Do you have a special animal companion that has brought you comfort during difficult moments? Next, we have personal growth. When Neville Longbottom first arrives at Hogwarts, he is a shy, forgetful boy who struggles with his magic. By the end of the final film, he is a hero who courageously fights in the Battle of Hogwarts and kills Nagini, one of Voldemort's last horcruxes with the Sword of Gryffindor. How does Neville's story inspire you along your own journey? Next up, we have Battling Our Fears. A bogart is a creature that takes on the appearance of the thing a person fears the most. Fortunately, they can be defeated by a simple spell, ridiculous, which will force the bogart to turn into something the wizard finds amusing instead. What would your bogart be? What shape would you force it to turn into if you could cast a ridiculous spell? This one is values and beliefs. 
At the end of Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 2, Harry snaps the Elder Wand, the most powerful wand in the world, in two. Imagine if you faced a similar choice. What would you do? Would you make the same decision Harry made? This one is relationships. It takes a great deal of bravery to stand up to your enemies, but a great deal more to stand up to your friends. Professor Dumbledore, Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. Do you find this statement to be true? Think about the last time you confronted another person. Was it a friend or an enemy? How did that change the dynamic of the confrontation? And then the last one that we have is identity. It is not our abilities that show what we truly are. It is our choices. Professor Dumbledore, Harry Potter, and the Chamber of Secrets. Think back to the last major choice that you made. What were the circumstances? And how do you think that choice fits into your understanding of your identity? Okay, so let's chat about the guidebook. So it starts just with a table of contents. It has a small introduction. And then it goes directly into each of the subsections. This one is identity. And it is in full color and there are images throughout it. And we'll just flip to this one. This is the card we drew. It's It does repeat what's on the card. So it has the quote and then the little blurb underneath it. And then it says, behind the magic. After Voldemort casts the killing curse in Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 2, Harry finds himself in limbo, needing to make his most important choice. It's between just giving himself to death and going back to the, into the living world, says Radcliffe, who believes one reason Harry Potter chooses life is because of his friends. And that is all it says on that section. Then it goes into relationships, but it really does have a lot of like movie pictures and quotes, a lot of concept art, and it actually is concept art that's by Mina Lima and people who actually worked on the films. In the very back, it shows that the text is by Jody Revinson. And that was our flip through of the Harry Potter magical meditation cards. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. In the description box below, I will leave a link in case you want to pick this deck up for yourself. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. I do flip throughs every Friday. You can also check out my blog for some other witchy and tarot content. The link to all of that is below. And if you'd like to book a reading with me, you can visit my website, which is also in the description box below. Thanks so much for watching.